Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you weaknesses for each mob in each biome. Let's get started. Okay, first off, deer. Deer have no weaknesses, so the best way to kill a deer is to sneak up on it with a dagger and special attack it. Boar don't have any weaknesses either, and you don't have to sneak up on it because it will just come after you. So you can pretty much attack it with anything. And you want to avoid using fire because they're afraid of fire and they'll just run off making it harder to kill them. So gray dwarfs have a weakness to fire. They're afraid of it and will run away from you. They only attack if they have a ranged weapon and it does a lot of damage to them and there's a tick on it. So a couple hits with your torch and you could pretty much fend off a whole pack of gray dwarves. Just be ready for when your torch burns out to get another one ready. Early game, I like to carry two or three of them. And then of course, lastly, we have the neck and they are weak to fire and they are resistant to poison and immune to spirit. And as you can see, the necks are also afraid of fire and will run away. So I'm gonna let this little guy live because he's just too cute. In the black forest, you also get gray dwarves, but there are two other mobs that you'll encounter here. And one of them is the troll. Troll are immune to spirit, resistant to blunt damage, but they're weak to piercing. So you want to use your at gear or your dagger. And you can see the damage that ticks off there is yellow, signifying a weakness to that damage type. If you hit them with your dagger, it does slashing and piercing. So that's the yellow numbers there. And if you can sneak up and backstab them, you most likely kill them in one shot. In the dark forest, you could also encounter skeletons. Skeletons are resistant to pierce and frost damage and immune to poison. They are weak to blunt and fire, however. They will not run away from fire, though. But if you want to dispatch them really quickly, just switch over to a blunt weapon like a mace. And of course, if you have the stag breaker hammer, it does blunt and piercing damage. So against skeletons, especially a group of them, it does really well. Even throw in a few gray dwarves there. When running around a black forest, if you see skeletons, it usually means that there's a burial chamber nearby. After you dispatch them, you can go inside and this is where you'll find your first certling cores. There'll be more skeletons down here and you might encounter a ghost down here. Ghosts are immune to poison, resistant to blunt slash and piercing, and weak to spirit. But you're unlikely to have a spirit weapon early in the game. So just choose the best damaging weapon that you have and give them the business. Okay, so in the swamp, you're going to encounter some new enemies. To start off with, we've got the blob, and they do a lot of poison damage, so you want to be ready for that. Avoid it or have some poison resistance mead. But they are resistant to slash, piercing, and fire, and immune to poison. But they are weak to blunt and frost. So if you have frost arrows, you can use those, or just whip out a blunt weapon and give them the business. Okay, next up we have the leeches that lurk in the waters and are a little hard to see unless you're looking out for them. There you go. So they are resistant to poison and they're immune to fire and spirit and stagger effects. So besides that, you can use any other weapon damage type you want, slashing, piercing, or blunt. Okay, so next up, Drugger are resistant to fire and immune to poison damage. Besides that, you can use piercing, slashing, or blunt against them. None provide bonus damage. Okay, and then we have the Certlings, the fire creatures. They are immune to fire, poison, and spirit damage, but they are weak to frost and water. So when it comes to attacking them, you can use piercing, slashing, or blunt. But if you have frost arrows, you can do a little extra damage to them. If you can hit them, they do move really quickly after they shoot their little fireballs. And because they're weak to water, you can dig out this area around here. And when they spawn, they'll drop into the water and instantly die, making it easy for you to create a certling core farm. Okay, so next up we have the wraiths. And you can see they do fly around. They pretty much only appear at night in the swamps. And they are resistant to blunt, slashing, and piercing damage. So the three main damage types that you have, they are resistant to all of them. They are immune to frost and poison, but they are weak to fire and spirit. So if you have a silver weapon, that would be great to use against them for the spirit damage. And of course, you can whip out the old trusty torch. And even though they're resistant to blunt, slashing, and piercing weapons, they don't have a very large health pool. So you can take them out pretty quickly with just about any weapon. So when it comes to wolves, they don't have any weaknesses, but they are immune to spirit damage. So you can pretty much fight them with any weapon you want. 
Okay, next up are drakes. Now they're immune to frost, spirit, and stagger effects, and they pretty much fly around all the time. So you can't hit them with a normal weapon anyways, but they are weak to fire. So you wanna have some fire arrows when you're fighting these to be the most effective. Wait for them to stop so you don't waste the arrow and give them the business. Okay, next up are the Stone Golems. They're immune to fire, frost, poison, and spirit damage. They're resistant to slash and piercing, so you pretty much want to use a blunt weapon on them. But if you can, you want to use a pickaxe because they are very weak to pickaxes. So if you can get on his head and hit him with the pickaxe, you can see it does yellow damage. Just watch out when he does the two-hand slam on the ground. That's an AoE effect, and it will knock you off if you don't jump. But as long as you have a high point, this really is the easiest way to fight them. Okay, and then next we've got the Fenring. And they only come out at night here in the mountains. They're resistant to poison, but they are weak to fire. So you can get a pretty good little fire tick going on them. But it doesn't do a lot of damage. So pretty much you can just fight them with any weapon you have. And lastly, we have the planes. So when it comes to fuelings, they don't have any special resistances or immunities except for spirit damage. So one of the best ways to fight them is to sneak up and snipe one of them so you get the bonus damage, unless you get both of their attention. And if you do, you just want to work on your block so you stagger them like that, and you can attack them with, with any weapon. But especially early game, the real trick to fighting them is to be able to block well, so you stagger them. So no special weaknesses with the goblins. Next up, we have the locks. Now they're resistant to blunt, slash, and frost, so you want to use piercing weapons. They're immune to spirit. They do have a weakness to fire. So one of your best weapons here are the fire arrows. And then, of course, if you can get the first shot off as a surprise attack, that'll be your best bet. And then after that, try to keep that uh, fire tick going. You could also backstab them with the dagger. And because they take a lot of damage from piercing, you can also jump on their backs and hit them with the pickaxe. Just watch out when they stand on their hind legs. You want to jump so you don't take the AOE effect, and take damage and get knocked off. Okay, and last up are the death mosquitoes. Now they're immune to spirit and stagger effects. So the best way to fight them is to just get ready to block them when they come in and then swing at them. Another effective strategy is to get your bow ready and right when they start to fly in, you shoot them with the bow. Just keep your eye on them and fire. Pretty much one shot from just about any weapon is gonna kill them. So don't waste good arrows on them. I just make wooden arrows and always have a little bit with me when I'm in the plains. Okay, and then we have the serpent. They are resistant to poison, immune to fire, spirit, and stagger effects, but they are weak to frost. So if you have frost arrows, it's really what you want to use here. It does quite a bit of damage to them, and it slows them down, as you can see there. And that should do it right there. Optionally, you can use the harpoon, and then you can drag this thing to shore. Now, once you get it on shore, you can pretty much attack it with whatever you want. Just make sure you don't drag it onto shore by the plains unless you're ready to fight the plains creatures as well. So you can drag the serpent onto land and this is the best way to get its scales so they don't drop and sink in the ocean. And as soon as I let him go here and start attacking him, he's gonna try to swim back to the water. We'll just drag him inland a little bit more. And then you could, like I say, you could pretty much attack him with any weapon because he's not weak to any in particular weapon or resistant. Get some serpent meat and some serpent scales and maybe a trophy. Okay, I've got some new merch. It features original artwork by the very talented comic book artist Joseph Bloss. Link in the description. All right, I hope that was useful. That's it for now. Have fun out there. <laughs> <laughs>